so <coughs> here are some data on um, the variability that we saw in um, percent signal change in these three different groups. So the adults are in white, the, that didn't show up, but um, clearly there's variability in all the groups. There's greater variability in the adolescent group in this sample. Um, and um, right, so what, but what we're seeing is that there's extensive variability. And so what we did is we took the, um, sorry, and I should say that these data are in response to the reward. So it's the same individuals you're seeing from the other data set. It's not more mm -hmm. variability at Large reward, large reward. Yeah. It doesn't look like there's more variability between adolescents and children. There is. Really? Mm -hmm. Even though you account for the negative going down in the children? Mm -hmm. okay. And so, um, so what we did was, is we took these data um, from uh, the percent signal change to the large reward, and then we asked them um, to report on their risky behavior or their likelihood of engaging in certain behaviors in the next six months. And what we found is that there was this correlation between um, individuals across development who reported likely a higher likelihood of engaging in risky behavior and their neural recruitment when they were presented with these rewards. And so we take these as preliminary data to suggest that there is a relationship between the activities they say they engage in, of course we don't know in the self-report data, um, they say they engage in and the neural sensitivity when they're in the lab and they're presented with these rewards. Um, okay, so that's really all I have. I'm going to have some inclusion slides, but really that's, that's we, we can just open it up to questions. Yeah. So, if I understand the, mm -hmm. the sort of, I don't know what you call it, social psychological data, right, mm -hmm. um, or experimental economic data, right, there's a big, there's not much correlation between the way people respond to different kind of risks. So, you know, I mean, social risk versus, mm -hmm. you know, or uncertainty versus, um, you know, falling off the mountain versus financial risks. Right. Uh, um, and that seems to me, I mean, that's adults, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, that seems to me to be a little awkward for this kind of general program because, uh, I mean, this is, I guess you'd have to say something about the scale on which people are measuring the, the rewards or something. It's different amongst individuals, right? But, right. Uh, so how, how do you deal with that when you think about this problem? Um, well, it's a big problem both in terms of, you know, the reward we talked about, but also with the risk because there's no real way to to equate risk. Is this what you're asking? Well, so the, so you take somebody who is, I mean, so economists think about this in terms of the you know, concavity of the use of mm -hmm. utility function, and, mm -hmm. uh, and you measure their how risk averse they are for financial rewards, right. and you measure how risk averse yeah. they are for for <laughs> let's say <laughs> physical risks, right. and there's no correlation across individuals in mm -hmm. those two things. So, mm -hmm. And you're invoking a mechanism mm -hmm. that seems to me to predict that there ought to be a lot of correlation across individuals in, in different kind of risks if it's just the same uh, if, if it's the, the same, same machinery basically right. how same sensitive system. it is to some you know how some dial is being put to respond to variants basically. Yeah. But it also has to do with um, you know what we were saying earlier about attention and what you're drawn to and what your context is. So perhaps what this is this is what we were saying before that studying how um, attraction to risk or engagement in risk changes across age is, is really what's necessary. It's a longitudinal study, but until then, um, I wouldn't know. Well, one way of addressing that is to ask what your self-reported behaviors were in this mm -hmm. study here mm -hmm. and See, how well they correlated with one another. Yeah. So we, um, we asked about, um, you know, like rock climbing, things like that, um, um, reckless driving, how likely are you to get in a car with someone who's been drinking? Um, how likely are you to leave a party with someone you just met? Um, with the children, it was really difficult to come up with so, appropriate. So just in terms of work by people like uh, um, Weber and mm -hmm. Grace Bilkey, who was here, those would all, all of those would be classified as the same category. 
namely they'd all be physical risk. Um, and uh, so that if they're a homogeneous category that you would get a correlation with the, the, the anatomical data is, is more reasonable. It still doesn't solve the problem that your, um, your experiments involve a financial reward. Mm -hmm. And yeah. as Rob said, there's quite a bit of data suggesting that um, financial risk taking is often uncorrelated exactly. with physical risk taking. Yeah. But I mean, this suggests that there might be something wrong with those prior data mm -hmm. because there is, yeah. I mean, there's some correlation here. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. And it'd be pretty, you could look at gambling behavior and stuff like that where there is financial risk or investment behavior as a correlate and ask whether or not, I mean, which predicts better or if there is. <laughs> Well, I, I mean, Adriana, you might know the clinical mm -hmm. data better than I do, but I know that these um, these dopaminergic drugs that are used for, for Parkinson's <coughs> and a bunch of other things, the, 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 the classic negative sequelae right. are so gambling they, addictions yeah. resulting, and they're That's not, right. you know, sexual promiscuity or right. engagement in, you know, re reckless driving or things like that. Right, but it is the gambling. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of continuing on the thread of heterogeneity, mm -hmm. I'm wondering about gender effects, because I would hypothesize that yeah. you should see quite a divergence between um, risky and risky behavior mm -hmm. at around adolescence for males and females. And yeah, we don't have the, the power um, or the sample size to do that, but I would love to. Um, and most studies haven't really. So They haven't? With imaging, it's really difficult to, I think, to get, to get sample sizes yeah. that are large enough. Yeah. Uh, and similar numbers of males and uh, males and females in the different age classes. Yeah, I think we had um, set an adolescent group. We had seven females, um, eight males, so pretty evenly split. Can't remember. And that was similar in the adults. Similar, but I can't remember the exact number of females and the adults. Yeah. <coughs> um, so yeah, that's all I had. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you.